It's been it's been too long. I've missed. Uh, <laughs> you know, R- Russell Wilson was on his bye week. We didn't have an opportunity to make fun of him. And I still think we did talk about him a little bit. I mean, it's hard. We touched on it not briefly. to because, like, let's just play this right in the lead up to this Titans game, and really, it was frankly caused by Pete Carroll. He did it on purpose, but I, 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 he has the right to take a victory lap. Russell Wilson was trashing him through his agent and through anonymous sources in the press for years and years and years about how the offense isn't creative enough, how it wasn't giving him an opportunity to cook. And now you see, seems like, seems like Russell Wilson was a real was the reason for that. Because unlike Tom Brady, unlike a lot of just like the really successful quarterbacks in this league, he thought he was too cool to wear a wristband, according to Pete Carroll. And it's true. Like, when I thought about it, I realized, wow, I mean, he, he wore a wristband, I believe, the last game he started before this Titans loss. But I, I was like, I never did see Russell Wilson wearing a wristband. Um, I know that Donovan McNabb also had certain issues um, in, uh, with, with not uh, wearing a wristband and maybe, you know, having a bit of an attitude about it before. So uh, with Russell Wilson, Pete Carroll uh, spoke in the press about um, about how he, uh, about how it was, uh, uh, now Geno Smith wears a wristband, and uh, that has opened up the offense for us. And so it was like a gratuitous shot, right? But at the same time, he has every right to take a shot like this. And this was Russell Wilson responding, pretending he didn't hear what was said by Pete Carroll, uh, and then proceeding to uh, be, be a little salty about it. Something about putting a wristband, putting the play calls on the wristband? Uh, I don't know exactly what he said, but, um, but I, I think, you know, won a lot of games there without one on the wrist. <laughs> you know, and... Uh, I didn't know uh, winning or losing mattered if you wore a wristband or not, but uh, I think that uh, you know, I you know, do whatever it takes to, to, to make sure that we're rolling and, and moving and, and everything else. A, a few times I've definitely worn a wristband, depending on the game plan, what we had called, and all that stuff. As you go through, then about so I mean, okay, dude, <laughs> won a lot of games with that one on. <laughs> Your whole thing was that they weren't winning as many games was because because the offense was not being prioritized enough or being creative enough. Well, if you had a wristband, you would be able to call way more plays because you would have a shorthand. It wouldn't have to be the coach going into your ear saying a long play call that you'd have to remember verbatim and communicate to your to your receivers, to your offensive lines, your running backs, etc. You would have an ability to just like look at your hand and then call the play. So people have pointed this out. We saw throughout this year them being really late to break the huddle, right? Russell Wilson and the Broncos having a lot of delay of game penalties because he's not calling the play in time. You know what might have helped? Not having the entire pre-play clock being taken up by you having to hear Nathaniel Hackett, then hope that you're remembering it right and communicating it to your a uh, line into your receivers and what into about, your backs. And what about Hackett having to consult? What about having Hackett having to consult his uh, his uh, clock management guy upstairs? So many different like <laughs> chains. Hey Russ, give me one second. Hey Marty, is this okay? Can we do this? Right. Like, hey, go go right now. There's two seconds. <laughs> yeah, like, and then and then they've been and then they've been getting a uh, de- delay of games. So that really put it all together for it uh, for me uh, for it. And he acts like it's an insult to his intelligence. Tom Brady has worn a wristband his entire career. What is the problem with wearing a wristband? You just have a shorthand here. It's literally like... No, it seems like more of a signifier than anything like, else. I, know, wa- Russell, I want to look smart. Russell Wilson's like taking a Spanish exam for, for class. And the teacher's like, okay, you can have a cheat code with some of like the prepositions and stuff. And he's like, <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't need it. No, don't think no. I'm need that. Um, I, I, can, I can execute without it. Let me cook. Do you and, remember- then he gets like a, and then he gets a, a D on his exam. That's the whole situation. Do you remember D when, for Denver. Do you remember when uh, Terrence Howard... Um, uh, thought that he didn't need a teleprompter to uh, do his um, award. Um, he was he was uh, presenting an award at the Oscars oh, no. for for Whiplash, I or he was he was oh, you know how they do it at the Oscars yeah, yeah, they yeah, like yeah, you yeah. queue up like trailers. I don't remember this. Um, and 
he was like, I don't need it. It's not it's just that it's not that many words. He gets up there and literally just goes like Whiplash, the movie. It's it's amazing. Oh wow. Fantastic. <laughs> And, he, and, everyone Adele just, does and everyone just very quickly was like, okay, so he completely forgot what he was supposed to say. Yeah. You, after, after saying to everyone, I don't need the, the teleprompter. <laughs> it's like, it's fine to have, it's fine to be prepared, guys. Yeah. It's and, totally fine to be prepared. <laughs> and when the whole basis of your damn argument about why you need to leave Seattle was that they were not taking the offense seriously enough, right? And running the, the offense through you. Maybe they didn't trust you because you were choosing to look cool with the the way that your arm looks or to look like, man, I'm just a wonderkind. I can remember things off the top of my head. Then actually do what would be set your team up for the best position possible, which is to have a cheat sheet for the plays, which is allowed. It's allowed. It's literally permissible. Like, so, it's not like, cheating. Like, <laughs> that is why your team didn't take you seriously, bro, and why they don't take you seriously now, and why he's wearing a wristband now, but you're still, still with a wristband, putting up 10 points against the Titans. They have a very good defense, and Jerry Judy went down. But, man, is he insufferable. I, I don't even, I, I, like, go ahead, Pete Carroll. Like, if that was what you were dealing with for years, he wouldn't even put a freaking wristband on his arm. And then he goes out and is trashing you in public, like, the offense is in the Stone Age. No, they're not taking advantage of my ability to actually be an athlete in this offense. I can be Patrick Mahomes. I can be Lamar Jackson. I can be Josh Allen. I can be Aaron Rodgers. I can have the offense run through me. And then you that's what you're doing behind the scenes? What a dick! Well, what an asshole! Well, the other—I th- mean, seriously—we've we've said this, but we've said this before. Let's ride, we've baby. Said, Let's ride. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go get his subway sandwich after this. Yeah, I, I'm feeling dangerous. You're feeling dangerous. I need a freaking danger witch right now. You, 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 you want diarrhea? Get the danger sandwich. <laughs> I need, let's I cook. Just, let's cook. Let's ride. Um, let's let's undercook. Um, so. We've said this before, obviously, but I think the big thing is just like, I feel like pre this season starting and pre like, you know, hearing the discord and turbulence surrounding, you know, the Seahawks and the end of the Carol Russ era, that like a lot of this was either A, on Pete Carroll or B, that the Seahawks would be the team to suffer as a result that Carroll maybe would not be able to adopt, adapt after Russ left. And it's clear that that the op- opposite is essentially true. That Carroll might be old in age. He's 70, 71 years old, but he he has adapted very well to a team that is was it's pretty unrecognizable from the Legion of Boom days. All three Lee, Earl, Earl Thomas, Cam Chancer, right Richard Sherman all not playing. Bobby Wagner's on the Rams. Russ is gone. One of the only Doug Baldwin's retired. One of the only real holdovers is Tyler Lockett, and that's basically it. And this team is playing really well and really overperforming. And Russ looks like a frankly bad quarterback, just like well, a, not, just like a like a aging quarterback who is who is kind of hit his ceiling at the at this point in his career he's had a few he's had he's had maybe like three commendable throws he was 21 for 42 yesterday and i'm not like completion percentage person right because you could be a 70 75 percent completion percentage you could be aaron Rodgers last game where like but he only he he threw you know uh, his completion percentage has been up but he's not actually stretching the field like he used to do and make that's games, the thing is right, right. Game, it's uh, uh, game changing throws. Russell Wilson is throwing downfield, but he's throwing into triple coverage. That's it, and exactly. none of these plays look like they're designed for that purpose. If he's um, not dinking and dunking, you're right. He's literally just he's saying thro- a prayer. He's, he's throwing into like, yeah, not even tight windows, like closed windows. Yes. You know? right. <laughs> like just heaving it up yeah. there. So I, it just like, I hope this finds somebody. <laughs> he, uh, he, he's playing terribly. And, and, you know, part of I think this just sheds light on somewhat of what Nathaniel Hackett's dealing with too. Not saying he's been great and the clock management is is um, you know is poor, but you have to wonder how much of that clock management is because Russ is struggling to get the playoff in time. Because and and maybe that's that the clock management has, by the way, it's been better 
since he's had that that wristband on for the last two starts of his. So uh, we'll see. But just another example of that guy putting his ego before the team. And th- the reason that Russ uh, that that Carol was saying this about Geno Smith is because Geno Smith is taking advantage of the wristband because he cares about the team winning, not him looking cool. And also, also before we before we uh, uh, end here. Even though they no, did lo- lose in, not- in Munich, but notice notice how he says, um, "I won a lot of games with no wristband." Remember, re- recall Tyler Lockett saying, "Recall Tyler Lockett saying it's nice to have a, it's nice to be on a team where one guy doesn't care about who gets the credit." Mm-hmm. I think, <laughs> I think standing seeing, up there think, with Geno yeah, Smith. I think we're seeing a few layers. I think <laughs> also just again, it might be incidental, like I said, but again, he's alone at the podium. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, I mean, I'd say of course he's like he's doing he's doing coverage. I just mean it's just funny that like we were like the only time we've watched like Gino is like when he's like f- flanked by his teammates. He's like uh, his teammates giving him like, showering him with adulation, him, yeah. and Russ is just like, you know what? I didn't need a wristband. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I won a lot of games, yeah. or he said we, but but still, but yes. Anyway. Oh, he, did he say we? Sorry, Russ, didn't mean to. Well, I, 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 I'll, 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 point, I'll slander you for what you give me, not point, for what point I. Point still stands. <laughs>